This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. You guys know that there's no better place than a cool facility full of big pythons. I mean, this is like a playground to me. And this week, I'm down at El Segunda Pythons here in California. And trust me, he's got some impressive snakes that I'm really looking forward to showing you guys. And there's nothing more cool than something like this. Take a look at this beastie here. Whew, she's a big girl. Look at, oh my gosh, it just keeps coming. Oh, that is a big snake. And of course, this is just the tiger reticulated python. But I tell you, tiger reticulated pythons are still amazingly cool animals. And the retics are, are always fun because they're so energetic. Unlike Burmese and some other big snakes, these guys just want to run and run and run. Let's get her back here. Now that is a gorgeous snake though. Take a look at it. And this is kind of a, a perfect health for an animal too, because she's kind of lean and mean. She's giving me a workout too. And again, a tiger reticulated python is a co-dominant mutation. That's really one of the first mutations of retics that were ever produced by a guy named Carl Herman. And of course, when you breathe these guys together, oh my gosh, she's wearing me out. You can get a super tiger reticulated python. But just look at her go. I mean, she does not want to stop. And again, reticulated pythons are really the largest or longest snake, I should say, in the world. They can get well into their 20 feet range. And I tell you what, guys, I'm going to need a breather because I am absolutely wore out. If you guys ever want to take a fitness course, I say handling a python a while would be really good for you. But this show is going to be awesome. We got a lot of pythons to show you. We'll meet up with Jeff later, the owner of El Segunda Pythons, to talk about what brought him to this level. My name is Brian Barczyk. I'm no zoologist, just a guy with a passion for animals. And that passion often takes me on animal adventures around the world. So Jeff specializes in pythons, but reticulated pythons in general. And that's a snake that I'm always fascinated with. So when I get around a collection like this, it's like, it's just amazing to see stuff. And I want to show you some really cool animals in this episode. And I'm going to start with an animal that I've always loved, but I've had bad luck with. It seems like every time I handle one of these guys, I get bit. But Jeff has assured me that this one is a tame one but you guys know I've heard that before. So we'll see what happens. And if you guys guessed a pied reticulated python, you guessed right. You know, piebald snakes, for whatever reason, have always been one of my favorite. And guess what? This girl's in blue on top of it. So she looks kind of cool, but usually blue animals aren't something you want to mess with too much. But you can see that she's acting completely docile. She's not giving me any indication whatsoever that she wants to be aggressive. And you can kind of see how the pattern is really jumbled, which is really common with piebald animals as well, is that not only do you see the white blotching, but the actual normal pattern on it is usually really jumbled up as well. And of course, it's a recessive mutation, which just basically means that you need to breed a pie to a pie to produce more pies, or you can breed a pie to a normal and get heterozygous animals and eventually get more pies. When I saw the very first pied retic, I was absolutely blown away. And I wasn't 100% sure if anyone's ever going to reproduce them. So now, several years later, to see that they're being readily produced and even mixed into other mutations now, it's really cool to think. And uh, you guys know I love ball pythons, so I've always worked with the pie bald ball pythons ever since the very beginning before they were proven genetic. So to now have a pie ball that can get 18 plus foot, that's pretty <laughs> awesome. I can see how someone can get hooked with this animal because they have so much personality. They're intelligent. They're always trying to figure things out. And of course, they're always kind of on the move, which makes them a little bit unique because a lot of big snakes, once they get really large, they don't move around a lot. Because you've got to imagine, it has to take a lot of energy for a snake this size to move as much as it does. But retics are definitely move a lot. But there you have it, guys. Pied reticulated pythons. Oh my gosh, take a look at that animal right there. Believe it or not, the last time I was here at El Segunda, I actually highlighted this very snake, but it was just a little guy, and it has grown up to be amazing. It's actually a Sunfire Rennick Ghost. Now the Sunfire is a co-dominant mutation in the Rennick Ghost. 
is a recessive mutation, but together they make an incredible kind of, I mean, just take a look at that right there. I mean, it's so clean and so vibrant. And that's that Sunfire, you know, it actually really brightens stuff up and makes it clean. And then of course, the Renic Ghost is just absolutely gorgeous in its own right. But I just can't believe how much brighter this animal has gotten in the last year and a half or so. And when it gets to an adult, it's gonna be even more incredible. And again, typical retic fashion, it's kind of uh, you know, starting to get its tongue out a little bit, which is telling me it's starting to get a little bit perturbed. So I've gotta definitely be careful because retics kind of give you those hints. They'll say like, all right, I'm kind of sick of you now, so make sure you don't push it too far. And, uh, and that's the thing, when you're handling snakes, whether it's, it's pythons or, or any snake for that matter, always kind of keep attention to what it's telling you. I know right now, if I spend too much time trying to mess with this animal, I'm gonna get a pop from it for sure. So probably the best thing to do is to get this guy back in his cage. So just as a comparison, guys, I just showed you the Sunfire Renick Ghost. This happens to just be the Ghost without the Sunfire, but you can still see it has the same brilliant color. It's just that Sunfire really brightens it up and kind of changes the pattern a little bit. But one thing that just completely strikes me with this guy is look at that head. That thing is one of the most beautiful reticulated python heads I've ever seen. So again, that's just a comparison between the Ghost and when you add the Sunfire to it. So guys, I don't wanna take this girl out because she's gravid, but you can see she's getting a little bit hyper. So I'm gonna be really careful because I certainly don't wanna get bit in the face by this girl. Oh, but this is a Sunfire head albino and she's definitely, whoa, yeah, she's ready. But I wanted to show you a few things here. You can kind of see on her side how she's really starting to swell up. You can see she's getting lumpy. And a lot of times when girls get gravid like this, they get a little testy, so you have to be careful. And she certainly doesn't like me invading her space, but I don't want to pull her out because that would be a lot of stress for an animal like this. But you can see this is the warm side of the cage, and she's just curling up here to absorb that heat. That's thermal regulation to keep those eggs nice and warm. <sighs> Reticulated python this size, whoo, <sighs> I tell you what, she's like saying, come on, get close, let me see what I can do. That's why I'm keeping this hook between me and her. But a girl like this could maybe have mid-30s, even mid-40s as far as egg count. And really big reticulated pythons can even have many more eggs, probably in the 70s or 80s even with really large girls. But they do have really big eggs. And I actually want to meet up with Jeff and take a look at a handful of those eggs that are hatching right now. So with any luck, this girl will lay a beautiful clutch of eggs here in the next month and a half or so. And then, not too long, we're gonna see some baby snakes. But let's go ahead, hook up with Jeff, and see some babies right now. I'm gonna leave this girl alone. So guys, I'm here with Jeff Kelly from El Segundo Pythons, and I talked to you about the snake eggs that that gravid snake was gonna eventually have. Well, Jeff, first off, you know, tell me what we've got here. These guys are obviously just starting to hatch, right? So yep. Is this all one clutch right here? It is. This was one female. She laid 60 fertile eggs. Whoa! Six, I told you guys they could <laughs> lay a lot of eggs. She laid 60 eggs, 58 of them went full term, and wow. this was an albino platinum tiger golden child to a normal tiger, so there's gonna be normals, tigers, super tigers, platinum, golden childs. You can see all these babies just coming out right now. I mean, how crazy that, and the crazy thing is, is I mean, I'm looking at 60 eggs or 58 <laughs> eggs, and it looks like there's 58 different types of snakes <laughs> yeah. in here. <laughs> That's the cool part about reticulated pythons. They have a ton, and you mm -hmm. can get a lot of variety in one clutch. Right. Like right here, still in the egg, but that's wow. a platinum super tiger golden child. Oh my gosh, a plat okay, so you've got the golden child is gonna be co-dominant, the super tiger, of course, is almost patternless, and yep. then the platinum is gonna kinda enhance color and eventually yep. can produce They whites. don't look like much as right. a baby, like right. that doesn't have a ton of color, but when they hit about a year old, mm -hmm. seven, eight feet, the platinum really starts to come through. Right. Almost. Now that's that's amazing, and and again, you can just see the different colors. I mean, you see like there's like some normal ones. You can see the platinums do look a little brighter as babies. Again, they're not like crazy, but you can definitely tell the difference between a platinum and a and a normal. And then of course you've got super tigers, you've got uh, golden childs. <laughs> there's, there's a whole variety in here. Oh my gosh, Let's that is awesome. Now, 
tell me, tell me, you know, now retic eggs takes a little longer to incubate mm -hmm. than say a ball python, or uh, so. What, what's the incubation time on these? Incubation guys? time on reticulated python eggs is 84 days. What's the trigger to get them to go? Um, it's kind of hard to say. It's I breed them a certain time, and I know when they go. Right. Every year they're going to go roughly nine months from when they right. when they lay the previous year. So yeah, so it's about feeding them up and kind of reading their behavior. Yeah, and when you exactly. see kind of their behavior going, you're going to start to breed them. And uh, so tell me, Jeff, I mean, what what got you started with the big snakes, man? I mean, why why big snakes <laughs> of all things like the big snakes? I, I started with the big snakes, and I've always they've always interested me. The retics, they're always. It's not like a, a ball python. They they sit there and yeah. retics are more active and yeah. they're uh, a lot more to handle than say yeah, a little snake you can hold. Here. They're yeah. definitely a lot more to handle and and I mean it is kind of an, an animal that you do need some experience with though. Yeah, I mean it's absolutely. like you know it's not like this isn't a first time pet snake you know. No. You know but but at the same time I think the big large constrictors like you said bring something to the table that yeah. the smaller stuff just doesn't do. There's there, there's nothing like a big reticulated python, and 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 you guys are doing amazing job with uh, you know just the color. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I look at this, and again, what's neat, guys, is that um, again with a ball python or some of these other snakes, when you're only having four, six, eight eggs, you know, sometimes these projects can take a long time. But with reticulated pythons, when you're having you know 58 viable eggs. Um, you can move projects along pretty quick, so you can get multiple genes and really get going. And that's why we're seeing the unbelievable polymorphism within reticulated pythons. And the original machine had a base plate of pre-famulated amulite, surmounted by a malleable logarithmic casing. And speaking of polymorphin, let's get these guys back in, and let's go take a look at some other animals. What cool. do you think? Cool. Let's do it. So let's see what you got here, man. All right. All right. We'll start with this one. It's a Lavender Motley Super Tiger Golden Child. Oh my gosh. He's a feisty little one. All right, so that's a lot of stuff going on there right now, guys. So we have the Lavender Recessive, Golden Child co-dominant. It's a super form of a tiger. Yep. And then the Motley is also co-dominant. The lineup consisted simply of six hydrocoptic marzal veins, so fitted to the ambifacient lunar wane shaft that side fumbling was effectively prevented. It almost looks like a creamsicle. I mean, just take a look at that animal right there. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> that is absolutely incredible. Has anyone produced these before? Um, yes, they have been produced before. I could. And, and what do they look like when they get bigger? I mean, they just kind of look They yellow similar. out a little bit, and hopefully some color will come into that guy. Because as you can see, his head stripe looks white. You know, Jeff, what's the deal with the fact that it, it's almost patternless, right? I mean, there's yeah. hardly anything. What's up with that? <clears throat> so when you, Motley's will have some pattern, the Golden Childs are basically patternless. They got some speckling down the back. But when you add the combination of the two together, it creates almost a black snake in the non-albino non version. Right. So when you add the course. albino to it, you get some pattern back. It shows up a lot better. And then when you start adding tiger and super tiger to it, then you start erasing more pattern and right. Whoa, that's yeah. cool. Well, so now if you took the tiger out of it, what does it look like? Well, I have one right here. I'll right. show you. This is basically that same snake with one less layer of tiger. This is the tiger, not a super tiger. Correct. Exactly. Gotcha. Understood. And then this would happen to be a, like a lavender instead of white phrase, right? Yep. Here, the super tiger tends to lighten things. Okay. Well, tiger does too, but super tiger erases a lot of it. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. And you can see, guys, how you know with the other one it was basically patternless. Now this one has just got a little bit of pattern coming through, and that's the tiger gene. That's just kind of you know instead of the super tiger, it's that tiger gene that's that's a little different. So uh, interesting. And, and then if you strip away. The tiger all together. Do you have an example? Yep, right here. Right below it. This one's a white phase. Okay, so this is the white phase, and you can see the big difference in pattern. You know, I mean, obviously, without the mo or without the tiger gene, that golden child, that pattern just ex explodes back into it. So, and again, you know, a golden child, normal golden child, is going to be almost like a, a bronzy, brownish snake with black patterning. Of course, when you breed it into albino, it turns into white patterning, which is, is really interesting. So, and, and what's the difference between an albino motley golden child and just an albino golden child as far as the pattern? You know, A lot of the pattern and stuff is going to show up in the head. The golden okay. childs won't have as much pattern on the head, and neither will the albino motleys. When you add the two together, you get all that they pattern. get a lot of pattern on the head. And this is actually a really heavy pattern example of 
an albino motley golem, so I yeah. usually have a lot less. Well, cool. What else you got, man? Let's see. We'll go over to one that I was really excited to produce, which was a purple phantom. Holy cow, that thing is gorgeous, man. Take a look at that animal. Tell me, so this is a purple, which is a, a type of albino, yep. and then it's the, the phantom. Mm -hmm. And tell me about the phantom gene. The phantom's a codominant mutation that uh, is a pattern mutation, and uh, it worked really well with albino, and you started adding platinum and sunfire to them. They've been done, and they look, they're amazing. Right, yeah, no, that's amazing. I mean, it's just crazy how, number one, purple this animal is, and then how much patterning it has. Yeah. I mean, it's super, super busy. Now, is that, like, most phantoms this busy, or is yeah. this a pretty good example? Phantoms, well, there aren't many albino phantoms. There's only a handful out now. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the normal phantoms, do have quite a bit of pattern, but when you usually plug things into albino, it tends to erase a lot of pattern. Right. Which is odd, because this one held a lot of pattern. Yeah, that's a lot of pattern. Oh my gosh. Well, I tell you what, this has been uh, it's amazing. I mean, gosh, such beautiful animals, and, and uh, I just can't imagine what the next 10 years is going to be. You guys are going to be producing <laughs> fluorescent pink ones pretty soon. Uh, that's awesome. All right, so guys, uh, you may not know this, but Megan, of course, Kelly, has a pretty good following, and Jeff Kelly are related. They're actually brother and sister, so of course, we're here with Megan, and of your amazing crocodile monitor. Tell me, uh, for the people that don't know about it, tell me a little bit about this guy. His name's Max, right? Yeah, Maximus. I call him Max, Max for short. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's super calm. I got him about a year and a half ago from my friend Vince. Mm -hmm. He actually raised him, but I've been around lizard since he was a baby. Mm -hmm. So. And, and guys, this is like, I mean, like legitimately, you go to reptile shows out here and everyone knows Max, you know, and, and just how amazing it is. And, and, and croc monitors are pretty big animals and they have some pretty gnarly teeth. So to be able to get this close to an amazingly tame animal like this is really something else. Just take a look at that tongue. But Megan, I know that you're like, Everyone knows you because of this guy, but more than anything, you're like the anaconda person. Yeah. So uh, first off, you've got an anaconda show, so let's take a look at that, and then I got to ask you some questions about anacondas. Uh, She's um, in here. And of course, guys, if you haven't uh, checked out, we did a whole show on Megan uh, about a year and a half or so ago, so it's pretty awesome. I'll put the link right up here and go ahead and take a look at that because it's a pretty cool story. I'd like you guys to check it out. But uh, as she's wrangling this big anaconda, I mean, look at this, guys. Oh, she's about 100 it. pounds. She's about 100 pounds, Almost guys. Just shy of 12 feet. So, guys, uh, for all you muscle bound guys, just think about that. Megan just <laughs> wrangling a 100 pound anaconda like it's nothing. So, so the one thing I was going to ask you is I, I saw and I was super happy for you that you actually had success breeding them this yeah. year, huh? So, yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> he likes to cuddle. I know. Look at how awesome this is. So tell me, how many babies did you have? I only ended up with five. Five babies. Yeah. Wow. How I cool. kept one of them. Really? Yeah. No. So how was that experience? I mean, was that your first? That was your first baby anaconda. Yeah. And so, uh, I mean, just walk me through that. I mean, you woke up in the morning, you walked out there, and you're just like freaking out. What was Actually, it? Actually, I uh, wasn't here. I had just left. Oh, so you? I went it. back east. Oh. And as soon as I landed, my brother called me. He was like, your anaconda had babies. Oh, my gosh. So, so you missed it. So you worked so hard. And yeah. then you did. Oh, that had to crush you, huh? Yeah. I had a camera in the cage, so I, okay. I could check it anytime yeah. I wanted, which was cool. Oh, my gosh. So <laughs> he oh loves God. going there. This is crazy. I mean, dude, it, it's like so cool to have a lizard that this is this awesome. It just like kind of crawls all over you and is awesome. So, uh, so are you you going to try to breed him again? I mean, what's yeah, your idea? Yeah, I have another grab of female right oh, now. Oh, so, you're, you, so you will actually hopefully be able to catch them this time, yeah, right? Yeah, hopefully. Oh my gosh. Well, and I'm trying to breed her this season too. This is Puppy. Oh yeah, of course, Puppy. I remember her well. So, so you know, tell me a little bit how it's like to have a sibling that you can share kind of this experience with. Because, you know, I never had any family members at all that wanted to do anything. It's pretty cool. I mean, we help each other out. Yeah. We learn from each other. Yeah, so. I mean, it is nice because then if you are traveling, you've always got your brother or he's got you to come in yeah. and check on things. And It's always easier for us. We help each other. He has all this. So mm -hmm. I help him out. Yeah. If I ever need help, he's there for me. So that's awesome. That's I mean, it's so cool. I mean, guys, it's just so incredible to to be around a family like that's so into this, and of course these amazing animals. And look at Max here; he's just chilling. I mean, how cool is that, guys? And uh, I had a great time. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as I have. And uh, make sure to follow these guys. You can find them online, El Segunda, and of course uh, Megan Kelly. She's all over the place on Instagram, and and you name it, you can find her for sure. And uh, as always, I'm Facebooking and tweeting my way through it. So make sure to follow me over at Snake Bites TV and on Instagram at Snake. Place.tv. Until next week, from me, Max, Megan, Puppy, 
You've been watching Snake Bites. Hi, I'm Peter Birch, an Aussie bloke who loves wildlife. My respect for nature started when I was a young boy in rural New South Wales. Since then, it's exploded into an obsession. New episodes every Thursday, only on Animal Bites TV.